So like one thing about my journey is that when I decided to go and start acting all the time, everything started to change for me. I realized what it took to be an actor. I realized what I needed to get better at in order to be a good actor. My name's Luke Cook. I'm an actor, I'm a writer. Um, I have been having a crack at this whole acting thing, or at least I, I figured out I wanted to be an actor when I was about 13, 14, when I was doing all the plays at school. And then um, as I continued, I was, became clearer and clearer to me that I wanted to do that. And uh, now I base myself in Los Angeles. I live there, I've been living there for 11 years now. And um, I uh, have a wife now, and she's also an Aussie, and we live both live in LA and we love LA. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's taken me a long time to get to where I want to be, and now I feel like I'm finally there. I was in my first school play in year six. I think that's like you're 12 when you're in year six. And then, um, and it was just very obvious to me that I had a real knack for performance. Um, and as well as that, I would, I would always like sing and I would always impersonate Frank Sinatra. I even did it at the back of the school bus and people would give me money, you know, on the way to and from school. And I was like, yeah, this is very, I very clearly have a knack for this. I'm very clearly a showman. Uh, and so, yeah, it was, it was kind of obvious to me and my school friends and anybody else who knew, like if somebody was going to perform, it was going to be Luke Cook. So I had a hard time at the beginning because I, I'd come out of school of which you could have, you know, you're at high school and when people come and watch, they want to see the boys having fun. They want to see the kids having fun. And so we're all having fun up there, you know? And then you get out of that and, and they demand you to be natural and real, of which I wasn't very good at. Uh, and so it kind of was a shock and it was like, well, this isn't really what I love to do at all. I like to do what I was doing back then, which was having lots of fun. And now I've got to be coffee shop naturalism of which it's just not my bag. It is now, I'm a bit better at it now, but then I was not good at it. So I really figured out that I had to stop doing this whole showman thing and kind of become more of a person on the screen or on the stage. Um, and it was a, a hard thing to figure out. So that, that's really been my acting journey, is going from somebody who's a showman to somebody who's an actor. You've got to be good as an actor so that when you go in for those opportunities, you're ready to kill them. And I was not really, even though I'd come off a year of full-time acting training, I wasn't really ready as an actor. And so it really took me a few years because I was getting auditions um, and yet I wasn't as confident as an actor as I could be. Um, so, so it took me a few years to realize, wow, I need to be in an acting school. And even my manager at that time said like, you need to be acting, you're not acting enough. You know, you're only acting when you're doing auditions. And so that's when I realized I needed to go to an acting school and I went to one called the Beverly Hills Playhouse, which is a place I was at for five years after that. And I was, I was there every day, you know, for a couple of hours every day, running scenes, running scenes, running scenes. Um, you're just constantly acting. You act more, I've acted more at that time than I do now and I'm a working actor now. Uh, so it was a really great time and something that, you know, if you, if you jump into a course like that, it's an ongoing course. It doesn't just go for three years and you're done. It's an ongoing thing. If you jump into things like that and give hours of it a day, you are getting better and you don't even know that you're getting better. After five years, I started to work. And it was a funny thing because my acting teacher always said, like, you give it five years from when you're good, right? So from when you're a good actor, give it five years of acting training, consistent, consistent acting training, and something will happen, I guarantee you. The industry is demanding a certain bunch of things. They love certain types of characters. Now I would be considered like a leading man. I went to room, someone's like, that's a leading man right there. And then there's like the best friend type. And then there's the, you know, there's like um, the every man. Then there's the dad, then there's, the, you know, there are all these archetypes and you need to fit into one of them kind of neatly in order to be able to find your niche where you're going to work. If you don't fit one of those, you're going to struggle and you better find that quickly or you need to have really something special going on. I mean, I think my advantage was that I came with something. I just didn't, I hadn't honed it yet. It's not up to you. It's up to like 
it's up to like let's just say you go for a TV show. It's up to the casting director to show you the producer. There's three producers and two writers, and and the showrunner. And so like you're like you have to convince all of these people. It's not up to you. It's a lot of like convincing, convincing, convincing in order to get a role. And it seems very daunting, but if you love it, then there's nothing else you want to do. So there's no other option. So you better go through it. You know, acting is in the act. It's in the doing. I think the more that you actually do it, the more you're going to be able to figure out where you sit best, where you're most comfortable. So I would say, don't think about it. It's not up to you. Go and get in front of a teacher and just work, 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 and you will know when you're in the right spot. I probably got one percent of all the jobs that I ever went for. Like, <laughs> that's not a lot. My unconscious response to dealing with when I wanted to quit was, "Do I have any hope? Have I just been for an audition that I may end up getting?" And so when you, <laughs> and then when you go through all that, and you let's just say I've gone through ten auditions, and I've found out that I didn't get any of them. It's a week past the ten auditions that I just went for, so I probably didn't get any of them. I'm, I'm like, well, is there anything else that I'm up for? Is there any other possibility? And then I'm like, okay, no, I have no hope. There is no hope for me right now of a job coming through. And then I'll be like, well, what can I do to tell myself that I am worthy of this journey? What, what, what else can I do? And so that's when you go to acting school, and that's when you put up a scene, and that's when you kill it. In order to show yourself, show everybody there that this journey that I'm on, I'm going to like, I'm going to win it. And then you know you come off stage, and then people go, "Great work!" And you're like, "Yes, thank you. I should be here. This is where I'm supposed to be." And just before I got Sabrina, I just want to mention this: like, I was auditioning so so much, and for things that I was like perfect for, that I was like, "This is my role. How is this not my role?" And I do them, and then I'd leave. I wouldn't hear a thing, and I was like, "Wow, did I even do the audition? Did that did that audition even exist?" And then I went in for the Sabrina role, and I absolutely flubbed it. I was like, "That was awful." I left, and I never, I, I, and I'd gone through so many auditions that month that I wanted to punch a wall. I never felt like that. I was like, "I want to just punch a wall so badly." And、um, then the next day, they call you. You're on a stronghold. By the way, when they say strong, they mean they have nobody else for it. They say you're in a stronghold, and they then they left me for two days, and I'm like up in limbo like this, just going, "Tell me if I've got it." And they're like, "Yep, you got it. You're going to Vancouver tomorrow." Not only it was, does it give me the chance to work, but it's also given me the chance to meet great friends. That, I mean, on set that I never thought that I would be able to make,、um, and also get a feeling for what it's like to be on a hit show. I mean, it's not a feeling. I'm on a hit show. Like to be on a hit show is a blessing. They only come along once every two, three years. So. Be gracious and polite. This is like not your domain yet. It's not yours. It's it's theirs, and you're a guest here. So you come in, and you're like you're lovely to the actors. You learn their names. You learn the crew's names. Know your lines inside out. You want to know your stuff inside out, so that you know should should things go off or things get a bit crazy or they ask you to swim while you're saying your lines, you can do you can you can swim while doing your lines. You can swim doing your lines backwards. You know, so you just like. You got to go in there, going, okay. I want to win the room. I want, I want to really enjoy my time here. So I'm going to be as polite as I can be. Even if they don't give me anything back, I'm going to do my bit here, so that I can't be accused of being arrogant or a prick. And then I'm going to learn and be prepared more than like more than these guys are going to be prepared. I'm going to be incredibly prepared. A tiny thing you could do. Let's just say you got nothing. Let's just say you don't have books, you don't have money to go and get a masterclass, you don't have access to an acting school that you'd go to today and sign up for. I'd say take your favorite monologue or scene from TV or movies and learn the lines of the character that you want to play. So if anybody ever asks you, hey, you know, you you want to be an actor? Oh, do some acting for me. Let's just say it's a director, casting director, or a director. You got something. It's ready to go. Yeah, I'd say the day that you sign up to school is a really big day. The day that you first wow a crowd is a really big day. Then the day you sign with an agent, where a group of people are like, "Yes, you're a marketable person. You could work in this industry." That's like a that's a day. 
And then when you get your first job, it doesn't matter how small it is, if it's in a French short film, just note that and celebrate it. Make sure you celebrate it because we're all too like, all too often like down on ourselves all the time. So celebrate your, uh, your role, especially that first one that you get. The big challenge is you're always gonna hear no. And it's very hard not to take it personally because it's personal. I don't care what anybody says, it's personal. You're too tall, you're too short, hair's too blonde, hair's too brunette. You're not good enough. Like your acting's not on spot, it's like you don't fit. So you gotta get used to hearing no a lot. But just so you know, as far as that challenge is concerned, if you're hearing no, then you're out there. If you're hearing no, then you're failing. So you're on the right track. You don't have days off. Like, you've always got to try and be doing something in regards to acting. There are days off for people who go to offices when they work. You don't have an office, so you've got to like be doing something. You've got to be working on something. And it's going to be, and that's going to be annoying for you because sometimes you do have to have a break. Sometimes you do have to have a night off. However, like when you, when you are your product, the challenge will be like, what are you going to do with that time off? You're going to learn to write and get really good at writing. You're going to be working on a character. You're going to shoot something for Instagram or YouTube. Like any time that you get, you're like, well, I did my auditions and I've got my hundred bucks from my waiting job. I'm, I'm going to relax for a day. Fair enough. But there's a lot of things you could be doing today that could be pushing you towards what you really want to do. So how you deal with your free time is very important. That's a, cha and it's a challenge because you're going to get a lot of it. So what are you going to do with it? It's great, it's so good to have a community of people who are working towards what you want to work towards, who have the same passions in life as you. So if you want to be an actor, surrounding yourself with actors and creatives is a really good and important thing. And going to an acting school will do that. You're just around them, you know, and it's good to be close to them. So you can compare notes with cast, you can compare notes on casting directors, agents, whatever. You need to have those connections and you also are probably going to find your best friends in those communities because you're going to find that they're a little bit nuts like you. Uh, but it's incredibly important to have that. Once I found that community in LA, LA became my home. <sighs> Three biggest resources. Number one is clearly yourself because you're your own product. So everything that's going on in here, all the creativity that comes just from you, that's a huge resource. Then it's like, then it's everybody else who's around you is number two. But I'd say like specifically, you want to know people in the industry so that you can get an idea of how it actually works because how it works in your mind when you enter the industry is very different to the way that it actually is. So make sure that you get to know people in the industry so that you can have a working understanding of, you know, what does a grip do on set? What do editors do? What does that actually look like that in the editing process? What, is it, what does a writer's room look like? Um, what do directors actually do? What's their role when it comes to TV and film? Um, so that's that's number two. Then number three would be all the things you can go and do as far as study is concerned. So acting school would be a great one. Um, reading books about, you know, Stanislavski, whatever, read those books, Marlon Brand. You want to read all those books. Um, Ivana Chabuk has a great book I read ages ago that really inspired me when I wasn't at acting school. Uh, so that acting school, all the resources, master classes that you can take online, like that's all the study. So it's you, people in, production and all the study that you can do. They're your three biggest resources. Cannot wait to act again. I cannot wait to go on a set again. And uh, I'm, I've got a bunch of things in the pipeline with things that I'm working on, um, which really play to my strengths and are something that I would really be fulfilled by doing. I've got two TV shows and a movie that I'm working on. So I just cannot wait to get on a set though, generally speaking, and act.